Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. A little over a month ago, I did a video comparing Topaz Labs Photo AI to Topaz Labs Denoise AI. I posted the video, but in the description below the video, I mentioned that I made a major mistake. That mistake was I happened to have used an image that had an enormous amount of noise and really neither application adequately removed the noise in that image. I mentioned that I would redo the video and this time I would use an image that has a more acceptable amount of noise, an amount of noise that most of us probably have to deal with all the time in our photography. That's what we're going to do today. We're going to work on this image. And if I zoom in, you can see it has some noise. It's not as bad as that other image was, but there is quite a bit of noise here. Also, I cropped this image. You can see I almost missed the shot. It's a horrible frame. But um, it is a decent image once it's cropped. I do need to get rid of that noise. So we're going to use this image first in Topaz Labs Photo AI, then into Noise AI, and then we'll see what it looks like and compare them to one another. Before I do all that, I do have a favor to ask. For a little over four years, I've had a newsletter. The newsletter is free. It goes out every Monday. I would be quite honored if you would subscribe to my newsletter. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to this webpage. Here you could subscribe. Also, I've added a pay tier. So the free newsletter goes out every Monday. Those that are in the pay tier will also get an additional post every Thursday, sometimes Friday, and an occasional podcast. So you could check that all out. Again, in the description below, the, below this video will be a link to this webpage and you could sign up there. All right, let's get started. Let's start with Photo AI. I have the image here. I did do some Lightroom processing on it, but you can see I did not add any texture clarity, dehaze. I added a little bit of vibrance. I just mainly did tone, added a touch of vibrance there. Uh, did I do tone curve? A little bit on the tone curve. Uh, HSL, nothing. It's a pretty old image, so I have to refresh my memory. Uh, you could see it's from 2013, so it's quite a while ago. We did lens corrections, uh, nothing in transform, no effects. I skipped detail. I have sharpening all the way at zero, luminance noise reduction at zero, and color noise reduction at 25. I think Lightroom's color noise reduction works great, and usually somewhere between 15 and 25 is more than enough. Uh, by default, my camera, when I imported this image, it put 25 on there, so that's fine. I'm just going to leave that. And um, really, I'm ready to send this off. We'll use Photo AI first. So I'm just going to right-click right on it, go down to Edit In, and then over and down to Topaz Photo AI. Now, I mentioned that typically I don't use this specific method when I send images into Photo AI. I did a video uh, talking about how I use Photo AI. The way I use it, I'm actually able to send a raw file into Photo AI. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to that video so you could watch how I use Photo AI and take advantage of uh, the ability of Photo AI to work on raw files, even when you're using it from within Lightroom. But when you use it as a typical plugin, as are all plugins in Lightroom, you cannot send a raw file into it. You have to send a TIFF PSD or JPEG. They recommend TIFF with these settings and that's what we'll do. We'll click at it and you can see in the top left hand corner there's a progress bar. Lightroom is creating that TIFF file with those specs and it will open it up into Photo AI. And those of you that use Photo AI probably know it's pretty automatic. You just sit here and wait a few minutes. The lower left hand corner there is a progress bar there. It's doing its thing, examining the image, uh, removing noise, and if it feels that any sharpening is needed, it will also add some sharpening as well. Now, uh, I said a few minutes, but it's actually just several seconds. And if we zoom in, uh, well, if I do before, after first by just clicking on it, you can see there's before and there's after, before, after. We could zoom in a little more. Let's zoom into like 400%. Move it over here. You can see there's before. Let go. And there's after. So it looks okay. I mean, it, it, it is a bit blurry, but there was a pretty strong crop on there as well. So let's try sharpening it. We'll put on sharpening. Now in Denoise AI, we don't have, you know, the full sharpen capabilities there, but we can sharpen it a touch. Now with standard sharpening, you can see what that's what it did. Almost looks like a painting. Let's go to lens blur and see if that looks any different. It does look a little different. There's motion blur, uh, standard 
probably standard, but I would bring uh, strength down a little bit and clarity down a little bit. See what that looks like. Maybe put strength up a little bit. So we're kind of playing around with it, trying to get a good, a good sharp image, but still have all the noise removed and not reintroduce any of that noise. And I think that's about as good as I could get it for this video going this fast. So let's go with that. All right, so one advantage of Photo AI is that Sharpen is built in. Uh, if I felt this image was really soft once I get back from Denoise, I would probably have to do another step and send the image into Topaz Labs Sharpen AI as well. Also another advantage with Photo AI is I could upscale it here. Since I have quite a significant crop on it, I could upscale it. But since we're comparing this directly to Denoise AI, I don't think I'm going to upscale it right now. Uh, Denoise AI does do a little sharpening to the image, so that's why I did do sharpening here. So we'll save it to Adobe Photoshop, let it do its thing. And once it's saved, um, I'm going to rename it because I want to keep track of what is what. Uh, so that is our noise reduced image. But before we we go to that. Let's go to library module and let's go to metadata. Let's go to the name and let's call this uh, photo AI. All right, we'll hit enter. And now you can see up in the top left hand corner here, it says photo AI. So that's the photo AI image. And let's do a quick comparison. Uh, before I do that, let's go up to view and let's lock our zoom position. So when I zoom in, it zooms in the same way. And we'll zoom in on the bird's head. There is, of course, the unprocessed image. And there's the processed image. Unprocessed. Processed. Hey, I think it looks pretty good. All right, let's go back to the raw file. And now let's send this into Denoise AI. I'm going to right click on it, do the same thing. Basically go down to edit in and over and down to uh, Topaz Denoise AI. And again, uh, with Lightroom, we can't send the raw file. We have to send a TIFF with those specs and we'll do that. And we'll let this open in Denoise AI. Now you'll notice, those of you not familiar with Topaz Labs products, Denoise AI has several more options and several different, what they call uh, AI models. These are diff different ways that Denoise AI um, can use to remove noise in an image. Now, the easiest way to do that is go to what's called compare, comparison view. Right up here, you can see the different views. I'll click on that and we'll get four different screens. When we have these four different screens, you'll see that it just so happens these could be different when you use it. In the top left-hand corner is low light. That is an AI model that works supposedly best on images that are a little darker. Here's one that's using the clear AI model that's in the top right. Lower left again is low light, so we don't need that there twice. Let's go up to this top left one and that low light. and Let's change that to standard. And all I need to do is make that active, click on it, make sure that it has the blue box in the lower left-hand corner. That means that is the active AI model on screen. And just click on standard. So we're going to put the standard model up there. So we have standard in the top left, clear in the top right, low light in the top left, and we have severe noise in the lower right. Those are four of the five different AI models. They also have a raw AI model. And typically what I'll do is I'll use these top four in this comparison view. Then what I want to do is I want to zoom in more. So I'll go to something like, you know, go to 400%, and then we'll put this over the bird's head, this little navigator window up top right hand corner. And I'll just look and see which of these four is the worst. And as I look at them, um, it seems like clear is the sharpest but there might be maybe some noise in here, but it's hard to tell. But it, it definitely looks like uh, severe noise is the blurriest. And there actually is some blotchiness in the background. You could see how this one and this one, they're more creamy background. That one's kind of blotchy. So what I'll do is I'll make severe noise the active um, AI model on screen by clicking on it. Make sure that blue box is there. And then I'll put raw in that spot. So I'll just click on raw over here and see what that does. Now, typically, there's another issue here, which I really didn't mention. Um, to try to get an apples to apples, oranges to oranges comparison, what we should do is when we have one of these active like standard, make sure that model preferences is on auto. So it's just using auto settings. 
Then we'll go to clear, put that on auto, so it's just auto settings. Then we'll go to low light, put that on auto, so it's auto settings. And then go to raw, make sure that's auto. Let that render, that looks horrible. So we'll go back to severe noise on that spot and make that sure that's on auto. So it's just a way we could better compare them to one another. And you can see once I did that, the clear doesn't look as good as it originally did. And actually standard looks better than it did before. So standard is probably the best of these four models. Uh, low light actually looks too. Low light doesn't have as much detail. It's not as sharp. But there are some spots of noise in the standard model. You can see the part of the beak of the bird here and a little bit over here. And there's really no noise in that. So let's go with low light and go back to single view. So we're in low light mode. We're looking at low light. Let's drag it over here. And every time you drag things around or you change the amount you're zoomed in or zoomed out, everything has to re-render. So you're going to have to wait a minute. Now I mentioned that in Denoise, you do have some limited ability to sharpen an image. You can see that there is there are basically two different sliders. There's enhanced sharpness slider, which is part of the auto settings. And then down here in post-processing, there is a recover original detail slider, which isn't part of the auto settings. You can see that's on 20 and 31. So what you could do is you could try moving these and see if we could get it a little sharper without reintroducing the noise. And oops, I hit the wrong one. Let's go back on auto. There we go. I wanted to enhance sharpness. So we'll go to that. And that actually kind of looks decent. Let's just max that right out and see what happens. I don't see any more noise. That looks decent. Now, if we go to recover original detail, you can see that that reintroduced noise. You can see how there's some noise reintroduced. Let me go back to what it was. I think it was around 25-ish, 20 maybe. You can see there's no noise at 18. Now, let me put that back up to what it was, like 73. You can see how it reintroduced the noise. So you have to be careful with these. Now, I don't need color noise reduction because I did that in um, Lightroom. So... This recover original detail I found is the slider that will more easily reintroduce the noise. So you have to be careful with it. Um, but that looks pretty decent right there, like at 20. So this is probably the best I could get it doing it this quickly in this video using Denoise AI. So let's just click apply. And so again, it's going to do all that. It's going to return us to Lightroom. Now, uh, let's go again. Now, I know this is Denoise, but let's do it anyway for the sake of doing it right. This is Denoise. That's Sun Noise, by the way. It's Denoise. Okay. Right. And hit enter. All right. Very good. Now, let's zoom in on the bird's eye. Okay. So this is Denoise. And this one is Photo AI. Denoise. Photo AI. Now, Photo AI is definitely sharper, but it kind of almost looks in a, like an oil painting to me. There's Denoise, and there's Photo AI. And of course, here's the original image. So there's the original image. There's Photo AI. There's Denoise AI. Okay. So there's the three original image, Photo AI. Denoise AI. So definitely Photo AI is a little sharper. But I mean, from this angle, they pretty much look identical. So, you know, take it for what it's worth. Uh, it is a little more work. Now, if I wanted to sharpen this Denoise AI, I would send it to Sharpen AI to do that. Or I actually could just go in Lightroom and see if I could just go to the Detail tab and sharpen it here. I just increase sharpening here, I could probably make it look more like that one. That's Photo AI. That's Denoise AI. Photo AI, Denoise AI. So I think they're pretty comparable. It's six of one, half a dozen of the other, as my dad used to say. And I never knew what it, that really meant when I was a little kid. But now I do. That just means pretty much the same. So that's it. That's a uh, comparison between... Photo AI and Denoise AI. If there's any other comparisons you want me to do between different applications, let me know in the comments below. If 
you feel I didn't really do this one properly, let me know in the comments below. I'll see if I could redo it. Just be nice because I am sensitive. And that's it. And again, I really would appreciate it if you sign up for my newsletter. Again, that'll be in the description below this video. I'll also have a uh, link to that other video I did where I demonstrate in that video how I use photo AI. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.